the wickedness of the Benjamite tribe. In our last story, we learned about the tribe of Dan stealing idols from the house of Micah and their violent siege over an innocent village. The tribe of Dan found a home at the expense of others, and Israel continued to sin before God. Now we learn about the journey of a young Levite and his concubine. As they seek their own path away from God, they fall victim to all sorts of dark evils, as inspired by the book of Judges. Hello, this is Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of the Bible in a Year podcast. In our last episode, we heard the story of Micah's spiritual confusion and how the tribe of Dan stole idols from the house of Micah to place in their own places of worship in a city they stole from innocent people. It was a sign of Israel's moral bankruptcy in a time when each person did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. Yet as God's people continued to drift further away from him, God continued to wait for a time to rescue his children. Today, we'll see that Israel continues its descent into wickedness, and we'll hear another story of a man straying from God to seek his own path a Levite who will leave his wife and journey with his concubine into dangerous territory, both physically and spiritually. It's a story that's destined to end in tragedy, of course, but let us not miss the lesson that there is for all who will listen and learn. So, let's hear today's reading. Israel continued its fall from the favor of God. The days of parted seas and manna falling from heaven were long forgotten, and even the holiest of people did what was right in their own eyes. Pursuing peace, blessing, and kindness was a distant virtue. Now people wandered the land without purpose. In those days, there was a certain Levite who was sojourning in the wilderness of Ephraim. This Levite, called to be a man who serves the people of God, left his wife and took for himself a concubine from Bethlehem. Together they traveled But the woman was unfaithful to him and traveled back to Bethlehem. Heartbroken and lovesick, the Levite traveled back to Bethlehem to win back his concubine's affection. He brought gifts and wrote poems, and outside her father's house he sought to serenade her. Her father opened the door, overjoyed to see that the Levite returned for his daughter. He invited the Levite to stay with him for three days. The Levite gladly accepted the invitation, yet there was a strangeness in the father's smile. A lingering wickedness that was too subtle to spot clearly hovered over the house. The Levite ignored it, wanting only to win back his concubine's heart. So he entered the father's house and stayed for three days. The two men ate, drank, and exchanged tales of their travels and exploits. The wine continued to pour, and the food continued to be cooked. Time moved quickly, and on the fourth day the Levite and his woman arose to leave. The father put his hand on the Levite's shoulder and smiled. Why don't you stay for one last meal before you go, he said. So the two of them ate together once again. Their meal and conversation lasted hours, and the morning quickly turned into dusk. The Levite opened the door to depart and looked at the horizon. He was surprised to see that the night had come so quickly. The skies turned into a deep red as the sun set against the bare sky. It was an uneasy sunset, and it sent chills down the Levite's neck. Ah, what do you know, the father said from behind him. It is already sunset. You might as well stay one more night. The Levite was uneasy about spending another night, but the father insisted, so he stayed another night. On the fifth morning, the Levite gathered his things, his woman, and his servant, and the three of them prepared to depart from the father's house. It was still dark, but the girl's father had already been awake, tending to the fields. He shouted from a distance, saying, Strengthen your hearts. Stay, and I will make you breakfast until the sun arises. So the three of them remained. Time seemed to move at a different pace in that dining room. Drinks flowed like a river into the Levite's cup, and he found himself lost in a drunken stupor that lasted all day. Slapping himself awake, the Levite thanked the girl's father and finally went off to depart. But the sun had already begun its descent, and day was almost over. Well, there's no harm in spending the night again, the father said with a jolly grin. 
His rotted teeth could barely be spotted underneath his white beard. First thing tomorrow morning, you can all start your journey, he said. The Levite peered into his eyes. The uneasy chills overcame him again. The Levite nodded politely, and the woman's father left the room to go prepare the beds. Then he took his concubine and servant, and they made a mad dash for the door. They saddled their donkeys and rode off. He would not spend the night again, for he feared that it could very well be his last if he did. The trio traveled to Jebus, which is now Jerusalem. The day was nearly over, and the sun was halfway below the horizon. The Levite's servant said to him, Let us descend into the city of the Jebusites and spend the night. It may become dangerous soon. The Levite looked uneasy. He had heard rumors of the Jebusites and was not sure if he wanted to stay in their city. So they turned away to Gibeah as the sun set behind them. Gibeah belonged to the tribe of Benjamin, and the Levite was sure they could find lodging among God's people. However, they had no such luck. The three of them knocked on every door in the city, seeking a place to rest their heads, yet each one turned them away. So the Levite, his concubine, and his servant huddled in the courtyard in the middle of the city. Alone and cold they slept, without blankets or food to warm them. It was still night, and the Levite had finally fallen into a deep sleep. His snores were interrupted by an old man poking at him and his companions. The Levite jolted awake and rose to his feet. The old man backed away and gave a nervous smile. What are you doing out here in the middle of the night? He said. This place is dangerous at night. We are traveling back to Ephraim, but no one has taken us in to spend the night. We have donkeys in need of straw and water, and we are in need of food. The Levite responded, hoping desperately that the man could help them. Of course, the man said, I can care for all your needs. Just please do not spend the night out here. There would be trouble awaiting you. The old man seemed nervous as he led them back to his home. He was constantly shining his torch into the alleys and peering over his shoulder. Another uneasy feeling came over the Levite, and the four of them entered the house safely. The four of them were warming themselves by the fire, laughing and eating warm food, The old man's family came out to join them, and they ate, drank, and laughed with one another. Their laughter was interrupted by a violent banging on the man's door. The Levite looked towards the man, and his face turned ghostly white. The man arose to go answer the door, and behold, the men from the city surrounded the entire house. The Levite could catch a small glimpse of the men through the door, An ancient wickedness could be seen in their eyes the same wickedness that tormented the hearts of Sodom and Gomorrah long ago. One of them stood at the entrance of the home and pointed straight to the Levite. Bring out your petty little Levite, old man, the word slithered out of his grinning mouth. We would like to have our way with him, he said. The Levite jumped to his feet and pressed his back up against the wall. His eyes widened as he watched the old man squirm near the door. Please, my brothers, the old man trembled. Do not do such a wicked thing. These people are guests in my home. But the men of the city craved the satisfaction of forcing themselves on a young man. They had no regard for politeness or honor. They wanted what they wanted, and they would take it forcibly. For this was the state of Israel's heart after they turned away from God. The men began to enter the home, but the old man stopped them, saying, No, no! Behold, here is my daughter. She is a virgin. And here is the Levite's concubine. She is very beautiful. Take them and spare the Levite. The men seized the concubine and drug her into the darkness. Violent screams and evil laughs could be heard from the distance as the men abused and raped her. It was truly a dark time for Israel. What began as idol worship slowly transitioned into a corruption that rivaled the wicked kingdoms of old. Dawn began to break. The woman crawled out of the alleyway. Her face was swollen from being beaten, and her clothes were torn apart. Barely alive, she slept on the doorstep of the old man, waiting for the Levite to come to her. The sun had fully risen, and the Levite opened the door slowly to see if the coast was clear. He found the woman on the floor and said, Quick, let us be going before they return. The woman was silent and still. He shook her and said, There is no time for delay. Get up and let's go. But she still lay there. So the Levite picked her up and lay her on his donkey. 
the Levite had finally made it back to his home. He came to wake up his concubine, only to realize that she was dead. There she laid lifeless. The Levite boiled with anger and blamed the men for killing her. Even though it was not just the men that slew her, his own cowardice is what killed her. In a heartbroken and shameful fury, the Levite took a knife and began tearing the woman's body apart. Limb by limb, he filleted her and separated her body. He tore her into twelve pieces and sent her body throughout all the territory of Israel. Pieces of her body hung for all of Israel to behold. Her bloodied and hanging limbs represented the divided and corrupt hearts of Israel. The land trembled, and God wept over their wickedness. We begin today's reading in the wilderness of Ephraim with a nameless Levite who is wandering with his concubine. Concubines were considered legal wives of their husband, but were afforded second-class status, something that will be shown to be true in a dramatic way in this story. This Levite, a man meant to be set apart to serve God and his people, had departed from his wife and from God's law and was living in darkness. It is a darkness we see throughout this story. The fact that our main character is not named seems fitting as he represents in many ways the wandering nation of Israel who are unrecognizable as God's chosen people. It's not long before the Levite has a taste of betrayal himself as his concubine is unfaithful to him and returns to her father's home. After he spent some time licking his wounds, the Levite went to win her back. He succeeds and he and his father-in-law begin to eat and drink together. For three days they did nothing but eat and drink and be merry. His father-in-law kept insisting that he stay, so he did another two nights. Then on the fifth day he took his servant and concubine and finally, late in the day, departed. When it was nearly nighttime, they found themselves near a city of foreigners, Jebus, which would later become Jerusalem. The Levite did not want to stay there for fear of what the foreigners might do to him, so he chose to go instead to Gibeath, a city of the tribe of Benjamin. Sadly, the wickedness he found there was even greater. Unable to find lodging for the evening, his party set up camp in the center of town. But an elderly man of the tribe of Ephraim came to their aid, pleading for them to stay in his home. He knew the evil that lurked in the streets, and he feared for their lives. But the evil in the streets soon came knocking. Judges 19 verse 22 says this, Worthless fellows surrounded the house, beating on the door. And they said to the old man, the master of the house, Bring out the man who came into your house, that we may know him. Worthless fellows for sure. How low could Israel go as the sin of Sodom ran rampant in the hearts of these Benjaminite men? Rather than deliver the Levite, their host offered his virgin daughter and the concubine. The Levite, fearing for his own safety and caring nothing for that of the women he had sought out just five days before, gave over the concubine to be beaten and raped brutally in the streets. Meanwhile, he slept, seemingly without a care in the world. This story obviously shows us how deceitful and wicked the human heart is. The Levite and these townspeople paint a gruesome and awful picture of the evil that people are capable of. The next morning, when the Levite found the woman dead outside the door, he did not mourn or offer her a proper burial. He carried her home, desecrated her body, and sent pieces of her to each of the twelve tribes. He wanted to rally the people to deal with the men of Gibeah. Instead, he would set off a war in Israel. And that's what we'll hear about the next time. Dear God, we know that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. That's clear in the scripture and is clear in experience. Lord, we ask for repentance, that our nation would repent, that we personally would repent of our sins, confessing our sins that you might forgive us and pardon us. We praise you that your son Jesus Christ came to earth to die on the cross for our sins and to give us eternal life. May we guard our hearts that we might not turn back to sin in any way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. 
I'm Jack Graham of Dallas, Texas, and you can download the Pray.com app and make prayer the priority of your life. It is our prayer that you would know Jesus Christ in a personal way. Jesus and knowing Him is the key to understanding the Bible. Jesus is on every page in the pathway of Scripture. So I pray that you would know Him and look to Him for eternal life. As we see all of these stories, some of them very sordid, we realize just how desperately we all need the Lord. So invite Christ into your life and receive Him as your Lord and Savior. I would also encourage you to download the Pray.com app and let others know about this podcast. And if you want more resources on how to know God and experience His presence in your life, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.